Jesus, we love you. I just want to be where you are. I just want to be near your heart. Cause there is nothing like your love. There is nothing like your love.
Cause when you are 
We thank you for this time of being in your presence. We thank you for your faithfulness to us, Lord. In spite of our challenges, you're faithful. In spite of what we go through, you're faithful. In spite of circumstances, you're faithful. And we bless you tonight, God. We give you praise and glory and honor tonight in Jesus' name. We bless you. Come on, lift that up, our son. Don't let the world see out. Get it up, our son. Don't let the world see out. Get it up, our son. Don't stir yourself tonight. You gotta stir your way out. You gotta praise your way out. Rama Sande de Leo Saya. Lord Rama Sande Baba Baba Karama Sande. Rosso Rama Dama Baba Masaya. We put on the garment of praise for every spirit of heaviness tonight in the matchless name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that we're more than conquerors through him that loved us tonight, Father. We thank you for fresh oil tonight, Lord, in the matchless name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that I prophesy victory in this atmosphere tonight. I prophesy change tonight. I prophesy turnaround tonight in the matchless name of Jesus. Come on, praise your way out tonight. Praise your way out tonight. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul will make its close to the Lord. Be not who shall hear their love and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Rabbi Sando Rabosa. Manda Baba Baka Rabasa. Roseta Baba Baka Rabasa. Roseta Baba Bashia. We bless you tonight. We bless you, Lord. Father, we would thank you, Father God, for your victory tonight over our families, victory tonight over our children, victory tonight over our loved ones in Jesus' name. Come on, let's begin to bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's press in. Let's press in. I'm also I just released this word as, as, as Angie continues to play. And this is our spiritual hospital. We don't just come to church just to say we've been in church. But we come to press into his presence. The Bible says in his presence there's fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So I just, I just feel like the Lord wants to release a fresh batch of joy tonight. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So if you're here tonight, don't be ashamed. If you need a fresh batch of joy, just lift your hands tonight and take that joy tonight in His presence. Lord, I'm my son, it's a joyous season, but everybody's not joyful. It's a joyous season, but everybody's not joyful. So we release the joy of the Lord tonight to be your strength. Father God, I prophesy, I speak joy to your souls tonight. Joy to your mind. Joy to your will. Enjoy to your emotions in Jesus' name. I just want you to lay your right hand on your belly, and out of your belly shall flow the rivers of living water. Let the rivers of joy flow out of their bellies. Let the rivers of strength flow out, flow out of their bellies tonight. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that what the enemy means for evil, Lord, that you will turn it around for their good tonight. In the master's name of Jesus. I hear the scripture that says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And you may say, well, Pastor Mark, I don't feel too joyous right now. you got to receive it by faith. For we are a faith people, and we walk by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name, I prophesy that the enemy will not depress you. I prophesy that he will not oppress you. In Jesus' name, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I hear the Holy Spirit says you're breaking out. You're breaking out. You're breaking out. You're not breaking down. You're breaking out. You're not breaking down. You're breaking out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
I prophesy breakthrough over you tonight in Jesus' name, in your finances, with your children, with your grandchildren, in every situation. I prophesy breakthrough tonight. Come on, somebody needs to just begin to walk around and take a step of faith and begin to walk around this place and receive that joy, receive that strength, receive that breakthrough, receive things changing, receive things moving in Jesus' name. And we prophesy joy to the world, the Lord has come. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. And he's here for you tonight. He's here for you tonight. What am I standing on the boat on Sierra Mande? What am I standing on the boat on Sora Banda? God wants to infuse your soul with joy. God wants to infuse your soul with joy in Jesus' name. He wants you to take that joy. He wants you to take that peace. He wants you to take it by faith in Jesus' name. Somebody needs to take a step of faith and take your feet and crush depression under your feet right now. Crush depression under your feet in Jesus' name. Move your feet and crush that depression, crush that oppression, crush those suicidal thoughts in Jesus' name. I speak life. I speak life tonight. I speak life tonight. It's under your feet tonight. Depression, say it like you mean it. Say depression, depression. is under my feet. Under my feet. Oppression, Oppression is under my feet. Under my feet. Fear, Fear is under my feet. Under my feet. Insecurity, Insecurity is under my feet. Under my feet. Low self esteem Low is under my feet. Under my feet. Low self worth is under my feet. Negative, Negative thoughts are under my feet. The lies of the devil are under my feet. In Jesus' name, if you receive that, open up your mouth and give God a shout of praise. The devil is a liar tonight. The devil is a liar tonight. We bless you, we bless you. Come on, let's give God a Psalm 47 and 1 praise. Psalm 47 and 1 says, clap your hands, all you people, and shout out to God with the voice of triumph. The devil is a liar tonight. The devil is a liar tonight. The devil is a liar. Come on, keep praising. The devil is a liar tonight. You keep playing, that sounds good. Keep the devil is alive. We're breaking forth tonight. I don't care who this name is, you're here tonight. We're breaking forth tonight in Jesus' name. Shada my son of Ocosia. Come on, let's pray in the spirit. Break through in the spirit. Break through in the spirit. Break through in the spirit with your prayer language. In the name of Jesus. We're breaking forth in the name of Jesus. We're breaking forth in the name of Jesus. The Lord says tonight, I will keep you in perfect peace as you keep your mind stayed on me. Lord, bless the Lord. Come on, let's charge the atmosphere with praise. Come on, let's charge the atmosphere with praise. The devil hates when you praise the Lord. I said, the devil hates when you praise the Lord. The devil hates when you praise the Lord. The devil hates when you praise the Lord. He prays. Come on, keep praising God. Come on, keep praising the Lord. Hallelujah. I feel a breakthrough in the house. I feel a breakthrough in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give 
praise. But before you see it, come on and sing a little praise. Break the devil is a liar. Oh, yeah. 
Amen. Any other volunteers on this? I got two on this side because it's going to tie it to my message. Pastor Bev is a happy mama. Give Pastor Bev some praise. Yes. Oh, look at all these obedient folks. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put you on the altar, your Kit Kat, and I'm going to let you just lay on the altar tonight. Come on, come give me a hug. Woo One of my spiritual sons. Come on, give Kevin some love. Amen. Amen. I got some pair of open mugs over there. I know what of. Um, it's all going to tie together, but my thought for tonight is, or you don't get my thought first, but my thought for tonight is no one or nobody can fill your shoes. Say nobody, nobody. can fill my shoes. As I was preparing this, what came to my mind is People may fit your shoes, but they can't fill your shoes. And this message was derived really from, let me tell you something, God will show you something in the natural and give you a spiritual message from it. And it comes from one of my little talk shows I like. I don't have a lot of drama in my life. I do like a little fun, but I, I, like, I like my Wendy Williams when I watch her. <laughs> Somebody laughed. I was in there. I was in there. Okay, I'm in just because I don't mind being left. And she's my age, and she does what she does. And I don't agree with everything that she says, but she's entertaining, and she, that's my little drama. Like, I don't watch all those other shows. I don't watch all that other stuff that people be watching. But that's my little Thanks. 10 o'clock drama or 3 o'clock drama. But she's been out sick, so we pray for her that God will bring healing and strength to her and to her soul in Jesus' name. So they've had different people that have been taking over her show uh -huh. since she's been out away from the show. Okay. And different ones and different ones. And some people just come on, I just can't even watch them. Uh -huh. And I was like, nobody can fill Wendy Williams' shoes. Right. Right. They may be like her. They may be good at what they do. Uh -huh. But nobody can fill her shoes. And nobody can fill your shoes. Amen. And I'm going to tie this all in with the birth of Jesus Christ. That's Hallelujah. Amen. That's good. Amen. We're going to Matthew the 18th chapter. I'm sorry, Matthew the first chapter, verse 18. And this is going to this is going to really speak to you because I can feel discouragement. I can feel heaviness. I can feel how we can come to church and how you doing? Oh, I'm blessed. You look blessed, but your soul's not blessed. Mm, right. Now I got quiet. Uh -huh. You say the right things, you dance the same thing, but something's going on in your soul. Come on, bring it out. And I know because I've been a little bit attacked, so I know that we're in a fight. Say a fight. A fight. But through this word of God tonight, I want to encourage you and shift you from where you are to where God wants you to be. Amen. When I say nobody can fill your shoes, you have destiny and you have purpose over your life and in your life. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to pull it out and show you as we go further. Amen. Amen. Father, we ask you to anoint this word tonight that you would touch the hearts of the listeners. And Father God, I pray that as they shift from where they are right now, that you would shift them and catapult them to where you would have them to be and cause them to keep their eyes and their focus on you. In Jesus' name. If you agree with that prayer, say amen. Amen. Matthew, the first chapter, beginning at verse 18. And I'm going to take my time because I really want us to get it. I think sometimes we watch the word of God. I love the word of God. This is our, this is, the, the word of God is our backdrop. The word of God is our everything. Amen. Where will we be without the word of God? In our good times, in our bad times, it's our foundation, yes. So we're going to spend some time in the Word of God. You spend time shopping, you spend time scrolling, and we're going to spend time in the Word of God. Come on. Come on. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. It's, and I'm reading from the uh, New Living Translation. No, I'm reading from the Passion Translation. It says, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. His mother, Mary, was promised Joseph to be his wife. But while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant 
through the power of the Holy Spirit. Say the power of the Holy Spirit. Power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 19 says, her fiance Joseph was a righteous man, full of integrity, and he, wa he didn't want to disgrace her. But when he learned of her pregnancy, he secretly planned to break the engagement. While he was still debating with himself, I love God, God is so faithful. While he was debating with himself about what to do, let me tell you something, while you're debating about what you should do about something, the Holy Spirit will speak through a dream, yes. through a vision, yeah. through a prophet, through a prophet, through a man or woman of God, through his word, God will speak. Yeah. Say, speak. Speak. I love this. And when he learned of her pregnancy, he secretly planned to break the engagement. While he was still debating, say debating, debating. with himself about what to do, while you're still debating, while you're still asking God, what should I be doing? God has an answer for you. Say an answer. An answer. What should I do with my body? What should I do with my family? What should I do with my children? What should I do with this sickness? What should I do? I should be moving out. It seems like I'm at a standstill. Some of us would like to move and we seem like we're at a standstill. Whether it's moving spiritually, whether it's coming out of debt. Say debating. Wondering, wondering about what to do. He fell asleep, Joseph fell asleep, and had a supernatural dream. An angel from the Lord appeared to him and said, Joseph, descendant of David, don't hesitate to take Mary into your home as your wife, because the power of the Holy Spirit has conceived a child in her womb. It wasn't another, it wasn't another man. Y'all not saying nothing. Right. She didn't have a one night stand with somebody else. Because naturally, if you see someone pregnant, you wonder, okay, well, I know I didn't do it. Y'all got quiet already. Right. Y'all catch it later. <laughs> descended, okay, he fell asleep and had a supernatural dream. An angel from the Lord appeared to him and said, Joseph, descendant of David, don't hesitate to take Mary into your home as your wife, because the power of the Holy Spirit has conceived a child in her womb. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Savior, for he is destined to give his life to save his people from their sins. This happened to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through his prophet. Listen, a virgin will be pregnant. She will give birth to a son, and he will be known as Emmanuel, which, which means in Hebrew, God become one with us, or God is with us. Amen. Amen. Verse 24 says, when Joseph woke up from his dream, he did all that the angel of the Lord instructed him to do. He took Mary to be his wife, and ref but they refrained from having sex until she gave birth to her firstborn son, whom they named who? Jesus. Jesus. Can we give Jesus a hand praise tonight? Amen. Amen. Going right into Matthew, the second chapter. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, uh, Matthew 2 and 1. Jesus was born in Bethlehem near Jerusalem during the reign of King Herod. And after, I'm sorry, after Jesus' birth, a group of spiritual priests from the east came to Jerusalem and inquired of the people, where is the child who is born king of the Jewish people? We observed his star rising in the sky, and we've come to bow before him in worship. King Herod was shaken to the core when he heard this, and not only he, but all the Jerusalem was disturbed when they heard this news. So he called a meeting of the Jewish ruling priests and religious scholars, demanding that they tell him where the promised Messiah was prophesied to be born. Verse 5 says, he will be born in Bethlehem in the land of Judah. They told him because the prophecy states, and you little Bethlehem are not insignificant among the clans of Judah, for out of all will emerge the shepherd king of my people Israel. Verse 7 says that Herod secretly summoned the spiritual priests from the east to, as to ascertain the exact time the star appeared. And he told them, now go to Bethlehem and carefully look there for the child. And when you found him, report to me so that I can go and bow down and worship him too. And on their way to Bethlehem, the, sa the same star, the same star they had seen in the east suddenly appeared, reappeared. Amazed, they watched it as it went ahead of them and stopped directly over the place where the child was. Verse 10 says, And when they saw the star, they were so ecstatic that they shouted and celebrated with unrestrained joy. And when they came into the house and saw the young child was married, his mother, they fell to the ground at his feet and worshipped him. 
Then they opened their treasure chest full of gifts, presented him with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Afterward, they returned to their own country by another route because God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. Say a dream. A dream. Verse 13. It says, after they had gone, Joseph had another dream, and an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, get up now and flee to Egypt. Take Mary and the little child and stay there until I tell you to leave. For Herod's intent to search for the child is to kill him. So that very night, he got up and took Jesus and his mother and made their escape to Egypt and maintained, and re, I'm sorry, and re, remained there until Herod died. All of this fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through his prophet. I summoned my son out of Egypt. When Herod realized that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated. So he sent soldiers with orders to slaughter every baby boy two years old and younger in Bethlehem throughout the surrounding countryside based on the time frame he was given from interrogating the wise men. This fulfilled the words of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the screams of anguish, weeping and wailing in Ramah. Rachel is weeping uncontrollably for her child, and she refuses to be comforted because they are dead and gone. Verse 19 says, And Herod died, and an angel of the Lord appeared again to Joseph in a dream while he was still in Egypt, saying, Go back in the land and take the child and his mother with you, for those who sought to kill the child are dead. So he awoke and took Jesus, and Mary returned to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus, Herod's son, had succeeded him as ruler over all the territory of Judah, he was afraid to go back. Then he had another dream from God, warning him to avoid that region and instructing him instead to go to the province of Galilee. So he settled his family in the village of Nazareth, fulfilling the prophecy that he would be known as the branch. Amen. So as I was reading this, and all of us, we've all read this down through the years. As I was reading this, I was like, well, why do, why did, um, let me see if it's over here. Yeah. I said, well, why, out of all the times, I said, well, why did Herod want to kill this baby? Why did Herod want to kill Jesus? I started to call Pastor Mark and I said, no, let me, let me do what I do and see what, what the word says. Listen to this. It says, so historians tell us that King Herod, listen to this y'all, or Herod the Great, as he liked to be called, was a cruel, listen to this, power-hungry ruler who destroyed anyone he feared was trying to topple him from his throne. He even killed several members of his own family because he thought they were plotting against him. When a, when a group of wise men or scholars came to, to Jerusalem shortly after Jesus was born, they asked one question, where could they find the newly born king of, king of the Jews? They added, we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When word of this reached King Herod, he sent for them and urged them to find the child so he could worship him too. But Herod was lying. Say lying. Lying. His real goal was to destroy, was to destroy the child that in time, Jesus would take over the throne. God warned the wise men of Herod's plot in a dream, and after Herod realized that they had invaded him, he ordered the death of every child in Bethlehem below the age of two. Herod wasn't the last to destroy Christ and his people. Even in our own day, evil men and women rise up against God's work. Right. Lord, have mercy. But God's word is true. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And someday Christ will come again to judge all evil and Satan's defeat will be complete on whose side are you on. Amen? Amen. So I was like, wow. So it began to open my eyes to some things and it's going to, I pray that it's even answered some questions for you. But I want to encourage you, to, I want this to be a night, a word of encouragement to you that no matter what you're facing, or no matter what you're going through, the enemy is trying to get, keep you from your destiny and from your purpose. Y'all got quiet. I'm trying to write faster. All of us, from the youngest to the oldest. And he started, the fight starts, I'm getting ahead of myself, but the fight starts when you arrive on the scene. When he was born, that's when the fight starts. Right. They were trying to take Jesus out before he even got started. And some of you don't got started in the thing that God wants you to do, and the enemy is on your heels. Y'all not saying nothing. Come on, I'm talking right, Pastor. I'm talking right, 
talking right. All right. Nobody. I just want you to know that no, I'm not talking about who you sit by. I'm not talking about who you're married to. I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about nobody can fill your shoes. Say nobody. Nobody can fill my shoes. They may fit my shoes, but they can't fill my shoes. All right, give God a hand of praise. Amen. I want to give you about seven points to remember that's going to help you in what you're going through right now. Before I, are we on? Is everybody here going through something right now? Something before you? Let me see. I want to see my class. All right. Yes, I want to encourage you tonight. This is real. It started with Jesus. All right, y'all quiet tonight. All right, number one, I want you to know, number one, you're destined. You're destined. You have a destiny. Matthew 1, verse 21 says, she will give birth to a son and you are to call him Savior for he is destined to give his life. There's a destiny upon every life in here. There's a destiny, a destiny upon my life. Sometimes I wonder, Lord, what's going on? Where is it at? Where is this? Where? But I know it because I could have been easily aborted. Amen. I was birthed out of wedlock. From the paperwork that I received, my dad was 16 at the time, and my mother was 15 at the time. And back in 1964, I know I don't look at that, I'm 35, but back, back in 1964, <laughs> it's not like it is in 2021. I'm talking right, Pastor. Back in those days, they wanted to hide out. I'm yeah. talking right. That's right. Now it's the norm. Y'all got quiet. Yep. Now they're doing it backwards. Yep. Live together first, yeah. have the baby first, and then have children, baby or children, and maybe get married. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's quiet tonight in this Presbyterian church. That's right. That's right. Say backwards. backwards. So I realize how precious my life is. Yeah. My life don't always feel too precious. <laughs> the things you go through don't feel too precious. But you have to know, number one, that you're destined. Amen. You have a destiny. What does destiny mean? That you're built for a certain destination. Say, I'm built, I'm built for a certain, for a certain destination. 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 You have to know that in your spirit that you're built for a certain destination. Where's my shoes at, Marcia? You found them? Hey, no, there you go. Oh. Look at all them shoes. <laughs> Nobody can fill your shoes. So I want you to know that you're destined. Say, I'm destined. I'm destined. Say, I have a destiny. I have a destiny. You, have to, you have to know that no matter what's going on in your life, that God saved you because there's a destiny upon your life. In spite of the loss, in spite of the disappointment, in spite of times of grieving, in spite of times of mourning, in spite of times of being depressed, in spite of times of feeling lonely, and in spite of times of feeling like you're not understood. Mm -hmm. right. Talking right past her, The king who tried, King Herod, he tried, he took, he was so shrewd, he would take out anybody that was trying to over usurp him, even his own family. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, so number one, you're destined. Say, I'm destined. Destined. I'm destined. I'm I like it says you're built for a certain destination. Also, it means destiny is also ordained, appointed, and predetermined. Say so ordained, ordained, appointed, appointed, and predetermined. God knew you had a plan for your life before your mama met your daddy. <laughs> I want you to know that you're, that you're destined. Nobody can fill your shoes. Give God a hand of praise. Yeah. Number two, not only are you destined, number two, you have a purpose. Jesus' purpose in verse 21 was to save his people from their sins. That was the purpose of the Lord. And he didn't just save, he healed, he delivered, he set free. But there's purpose on your life. That's why your fight is so great. Because there's purpose on your life. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why the enemy fights your children is the closest to you because there's destiny on your life. That's why the enemy fights you in your soul because there's a purpose on your life. That's why the, the devil doesn't want you to stay connected to prayer and stay connected to the word because there's a purpose on your life. That's good. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Number three. I'm trying to read what I wrote on here. The reason. Um, number three. Do all that the Lord tells you or leads you to do or instructs you to do. Do all. Say all. all. Verse 24 says, when Joseph woke up from his dream, he did all that the angel of the Lord instructed him to do. All of us that are caught, that are destined, all of us that have purpose, all of us that are ordained, appointed, and predetermined, we have to do what it is that God wants us to do. Sometimes it's not too much fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes you hurt doing it. Yes. Sometimes you cry doing it. Yes, Sometimes your flesh don't want to do it. That's right. It's always a fight. Yes. It's always a fight. The enemy always wants to discourage us, bring us disappointment. We have one good day that the enemy wants to bring so much more upon us because he's trying to get you away from your destiny and purpose. Say destiny and purpose. Destiny, destiny and purpose. purpose. True. Number four. The fourth point. This is real. This really touched me. After you're born, then the fight begins. After you're born, then the fight begins. Verses one through eleven. And Matthew, it says Jesus was born in Bethlehem near Jerusalem. Matthew 2 and 1. Jesus was born in Bethlehem near Jerusalem during the reign of King Herod. And after birth, a group of spiritual priests from the east, as soon as he came on the scene, that's when the fight came. Either he gets you after you're born or after you're born again. That's it. Because he doesn't want anybody to fulfill their purpose and destiny. You can read it. So it's in Matthew 1 through 11. That's the scripture reference for that. After you're born, then the fight begins. Or even after you're born again. I want to tell you, we're always in a fight. We're always in a battle. It's always something to contend with. I believe, I believe God allows certain things to come into our life to keep us trusting in him. Y'all got quiet. To keep us praying to him. To keep us coming to him. Because when things get too good, we don't, we will stop coming to church. Things get too good, we'll stop praying. Things get too good, we'll stop doing certain things. And I have a confession because the Lord put it on my heart this week. And I was like, oof. I believe for myself. Can I talk about me? Yes, Hey Amen. Somebody told me. Somebody told me I ain't gonna look at nobody in here. But somebody told me then you can have your little uh, transparency doctrine. <laughs> what do you want? Because I'm always saying, be transparent, be transparent, be transparent. But I'm being transparent about me. Amen. Amen. Be, why do I say that? As I was talking about Natasha when me and Will were coming over here, and Natasha was just sharing last week. A young girl that was here last week. Yeah. Uh, my heart went out to her. She was sharing how, like, probably like within the span of four weeks, she lost a different friend in her age category. She's no more than 23. Yes. That's a lot for a 23 year old to deal with. Amen. But by her being transparent and sharing, that's able to help us. But you know what the Lord told me today? He put on my heart, and, and I'm coming out of it. And I know if, if He convicted me about it this week, it's, it's in the house. It's for all of us. The Lord told me. I believe I would see more, or we would see more in the body of Christ, but you know what? We have become too comfortable. Mm. Lord, have mercy. Okay. Speak, Lord. We have become too comfortable. As long as my four are okay, this is okay, that's okay. We don't reach for more. We don't strive for more. We don't release our faith for more. 
I mean, on, on a bigger scale. Amen. Because we're we, we got a good job, we got a decent job, things are going good, bills are paid, money in the bank. Blah, 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 blah. But who really, myself included, who will come out of your comfort zone and say, God, whatever you want me to do, even if it seems crazy or outside the box, I'm willing to do it. We run back to our comfort zone. Lord. We want so much from God, but what are we really willing to sacrifice to see that happen? What are we really willing to sacrifice to see signs, wonders, and miracles happen in the church? What are we really willing to sacrifice to see a move of God for this nation? Amen. Amen. Are we willing to fast? Are we willing to pray? Are we, are, willing to, are we willing to come outside of our own Christian comforts? Well, I pray every day with um, Pastor Faith from 6.30 to 7. I pray with Minister Claire and I pray with this. That's wonderful. That's good. But suppose the Lord said, I want you to fast for, I want you to pray for a week and don't get no sleep. Just pray. We're very comfortable in America. You know how I know we're comfortable? Because as soon as the Lord, he comes on, oh, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Pray for you for what? Oh, the devil's fighting me on my job. That's that money. Oh, pray for me, pray for me. Someone so didn't speak to me. We are too comfortable. I ain't just talking about, I'm talking to me first. Really moving in the things of God. Really saying, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice and see what, what does God have for us? What's the more he has for us? What's the more he has for me? If our little, my little house together, this together, that's together. We're very comfortable. And I know I know it's in the house of y'all quiet. <laughs> we don't want to sacrifice anything. If it doesn't work in our little, my little time, my little bubble, my little box. Oh no, I, I would pick you up. I can't I can't drop 30 minutes to pick you up and bring you back. You got people that drive an hour and a half to come to church. Comfort zone. Comfortable. All of us. We down to the dime. I made twelve hundred dollars gross. So my time is one twenty. Period. <laughs> Suppose the Lord say, Well, I know you did one twenty period, that's nice, you ten percent. Suppose the Lord say, you know, this week, just give your own check. Oh Lord, if you tell me to do something, even if it's hard, I'll do it. No, you won't. <laughs> Whatever you say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. Holy Spirit, I'll do what you want me to do. Oh, I'm just crying. I'm too bad. I'm just saying, I'll do whatever. Give your whole check. <laughs> Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I got bills to pay. We're comfortable. You don't believe me? You trust the Holy Spirit? Ask, ask the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit, am I comfortable? <laughs> ask him. So hold out to Jesus. I'm so down to Jesus. No, you're not. <laughs> when you're sold out, this is happening to me, I'm in it now. You'll do things that are uncomfortable. You'll do things your flesh doesn't want to do. You call people that you really don't want to call. <laughs> Because it's a test. My Lord, my Lord. You'll bless people that the Lord tells you to bless. Because he tells you. I don't care what people think about you. I don't care how they treat you. You do what God tells you to do. The worst is if you're willing and obedient yes, that you shall eat the good land. Willing and obedient just willing and obedient just don't mean to the comfortable things. Well, you're going to be me. Sometimes you're going to do something that your flesh don't want to do. That's right. 
Not just for, say, God, what do you want me to give? What, how do you want me to do this? This money, this check belongs to you. What do you want me to do? Well, I, I ain't talking about this, but I got Christmas shopping. I got, I got, I ain't bought, like, I ain't even started my Christmas shopping. I ain't bought the kids, I ain't bought the clothes, I ain't bought me nothing. I ain't nothing under the tree. The tree just sit there as bad as can be. I'm not trying to mess up your Christmas. I'm just telling you what the Lord gave me because I know we can do better. One of my prayers for 2021 is, Lord, teach us how to reach more people. Not just to end reach, but to continue to outreach. We got to get a new mindset for 2022. Not because it's here. We need the mindset now. <laughs> we're going to 22. We're already in that mindset. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Just write down the word comfortable. Mm -hmm. Now, how many real saved people in here that love the Lord will say, that's me, Pastor Mark. I, I am too comfortable. Amen. Thank God for that. Thank God. Amen. I saw two hands go up. That's honesty. Because we like our little stuff in order. Rent paid, BSENG paid, all my cellular phones paid, and I, I got to make sure I can text call out, everything paid. Well, let's say you call somebody and say, you need anything? Can I pay a bill for you this week? You need some groceries? When's the last time you say, well, you know what, I'm just, I don't have to be a birthday or not, I'm just, here, yeah, here, just take this. I'm just, I'm just going to bless you. Do what you want with it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's quiet. Mm -hmm. Stay comfortable. comfortable. After you're born, then the fight begins. Or even after you're born, again, the fight begins. We're always in a fight. There's always a challenge. There's always a test. Many of my seniors in here have been through some hard trials. And some great losses. And I admire, let's give God a hand of praise. Uh -huh. I admire these women like you here that have lost a lot. Right. But yet they serve God. Amen. Amen. Have lost companions, mm -hmm. but they still serve God. Mm -hmm. Have lost children, but yet serve God. That's to be honored. That is. Amen. The Bible says we're to know them. We 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 win it. We, and I like people on TV too. We want, we want to love all people on TV, but the Bible says, know them that labor among you. That's right. Say it, Pastor. So good. Yep. Yeah. We're to learn from those that have wisdom, those that have gone through loss, but they bounce back and continue to do, Pastor Faye, what the Lord called her to do. She didn't put, when her husband died, she didn't put the uh, prayer line, she, I didn't even know what I was going to say, she didn't put the prayer line on a six week sabbatical. Amen. The prayer line continued. Prayers Amen. continued. Amen. Ministry, I learned that first, when I came out to the Baptist church and I went to the Church of God in Christ and I remember seeing other women in the Church of God in Christ, you know Sister Doris, and have lost their husbands and I saw them coming back to church praising God right. and I never saw nothing like that in all my life. I saw it when they lost somebody that people stayed home for a long time. And that's okay, you know, I'm just saying. But I saw women, I saw that in the whole of this church, when these women was coming to church on Sundays, praising God, giving God praise, because they knew that even though my loved one's not here, God is still good. I'm going to praise him. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. So I want to I want to just say that this is real elementary, but it's it's really good because I want you to know that the Lord knows you're in a fight. And we're called to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. 
And you may not be fighting a financial fight, but maybe it's emotional. Maybe it's your soul. Maybe you need direction. Maybe you're knocking at the door and it's like it won't open up. Yes, God. Come on. You're like, God, where are you? I'm, I'm tired of living like this. Yes, God. I'm tired of asking and praying and not seeing nothing. Speak. Preaching and teaching so many years. You're like, where are the people, Lord? <laughs> but it's okay because you do what you do. But I'm letting you know there's a fight. Amen. Leaders fight. Amen. We struggle. We go through. We want to see progress. And I said, Lord, I don't want to. You know what? Even, even if it means you got to take a new direction. Mm -hmm. okay. You got to see what God is saying. You may be right on time and right on target. You may be right where God wants you. But just make sure. Make sure that you're, still, that you're not going straight and the Lord made a right somewhere. Right. You want to follow his wind. You want to follow his voice. Well, I've been doing this since 1965. You better make sure you're doing what the Lord wants you to do. Never mind what they did. They don't want to be with the Lord. All right, give God a praise. I, ain't yeah, amen. I can't get off that. After you're born or born again, there's a fight. The fight begins. Look at all the people that didn't even make it to birth. Let me know that we thank God that they with the Lord. But let me tell you something. Once you begin, once you get here, there's a fight. If Jesus had a fight, we're going to have a fight. But he teaches us. He teaches our hands to war and our fingers to fight. And as we stay close to him, as we stay close to him, as we seek his face, then he brings us through. Number five, in the midst of your fight, the Lord will always shield you from the enemy. Y'all heard that? Uh -huh. You might not feel like he's shielding you, but he's shielding you. Verse 13, uh, Matthew 2, 13. After they had gone, Joseph had another dream. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, get up now and flee to Egypt. Take Mary and the little child and stay there until I leave. For Herod's intent is to search for the child and to kill him. If you stay close to God, you stay close to his voice, you stay close to prayer, you stay close to the word of God, the enemy will not overwhelm you. If you tell you to get up and go, get up and go. You might not even know where you're going, just get up and go. Just move when he says move. I don't know. God telling me to get up. You better get up. I don't even know where I'm going. I don't care. Get up. Go somewhere. Go get in the car. Take a drive. Go somewhere. Number six. I want to encourage you to let you know that you can. You can and will do it. You can and will do it. Whatever your purpose is, whatever your destiny is, you can and will do it. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It doesn't say we can do everything. Yes, right. Some people are like, oh, I can do everything. I can. No, you, you, when you do all things that Christ, through Christ and strengthens you, you do what he's ordained for you to do. Come on. Yes. Amen. Good point. Mm -hmm. Yes. You do what he's called you to do. You do what he's anointed you to do. He didn't say you're going to do everything. We think we're going to do everything. No, you're not going to do it. You're going to, your, 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 your gift and your anointing and your power is in that thing that God has anointed you to do. If he's anointed you to pray, you'll be able to pray. If he's anointed you to teach, you'll be able to teach. If he's anointed you to prophesy, you'll prophesy. Whatever he's anointed you to do, that's what you can do. Not everything. Amen. Amen. If he's given you a gift in your hands, you can't do everything. You do what it is that he's called and commissioned you can do. That's what you'll do. Amen. And number seven, I want you to know that you're unstoppable. Psalm 91 and 7 says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Glory to God. First John 4 and 4 says, Greater is he that is inside of you than he that's in the world. You're not great because of who you are. You're great because of who lies on the inside of you. Jesus Christ lives on the inside of you. It's in him that I live and move and have my being. So I want to encourage you tonight. 
that you're destined. I'm going to read those again. Number one, I want to encourage you. Why did I say no one can fill your shoes? Number one, because you're destined. You're called of God. You're ordained. You're appointed. You're predetermined. Number two, you have a purpose. Jesus' purpose was to save his people from their sins. And that's a big job. That's a big job. But nobody could do what Jesus did. Only, he didn't call David to do it. He didn't. Jesus, nobody can fulfill Jesus' shoes. Mark Wright, nobody can fulfill your shoes. Faith Scott Gordon, nobody can fulfill your shoes. Mom Priscilla, nobody, nobody can fulfill your shoes, Maria. I could take these boots off and somebody could be able to fit my size 14 boot. Excuse me, Pastor Bill. I didn't ask him to I'll see you after church. My Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of good news. So my feet are big and beautiful. And every two weeks, I sit them on the people's laps so they can make sure my feet look good with a manicure and a pedicure. Praise the Lord of hosts. So I just can't expect those words say my feet are beautiful. They're beautiful. They're beautiful once they clip them up and edge them up and do what they got to do. Give God praise. I forgot what I was saying. Pastor Ben just interrupted me. Everybody stretch your hand to Pastor Ben. Say, send deliverance, Lord. Put me off track. What was I saying? Oh. I forgot what was I saying. She took my thought. What she said? What are you going to say, Pastor Ben? Lord, now I know not to ask you, Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, bring all things back to you. Remember, what was I saying, Pastor Mark? Who's paying attention? You have a purpose. You have a purpose. Now the one distracted you want to argue oh, you have a purpose. She distracted me talking about my feet. That's what the Lord gave me. Amen. Amen. But I can trample some demons with these feet. Come on in. Break it down, Pastor. I know some of y'all stuck at 14. I don't care. I can't help it. Give the Lord a hand of praise. You have a purpose. Purpose. And I'm saying this because I, we all have a fight. Just because you're anointed, it doesn't mean you don't have a fight. Just because there's purpose on your life doesn't mean you don't have a fight. Just because you're anointed, I'm telling you, the devil doesn't care, it doesn't matter. True. You think the Lord, you think you're not going to be tempted by the enemy? So, oh, you can't tempt Pastor Mark. That's God's anointed. That's God's prayer word. No, he's coming even greater. Come on. To discourage you, to stop you, to keep you from your destiny, to make you feel, with, to, to fill you with low self-esteem, yes. low self-worth. Yes. I can't do it because I'm a woman. Don't you think the Lord knew what you were when he called you? He yes. made you. Yes. He's not surprised because he called you as a woman. Look at Mary. Her purpose was to bring in Jesus. What a powerful, that's powerful. Amen. My mother's purpose, the late great Edith and Brian, her purpose was to come find me so I can do what I'm doing now. She probably didn't even know I was doing all of what I'm doing. But her purpose, because I was adopted, her purpose, God put it in her heart to go in 1964 to come and find me. You've got to have praise. Amen. And I want to say this. When God's hands on your life, no devil in hell a person can stop it or block it. He may try to hinder it, he may try to delay it, but delay is not denied. And this Christmas season, I want to encourage you to let you know you got to keep going. Nobody can fill your shoes. Look at you. Look at the shoes on your feet. Nobody can fill your fulfill your shoes. Nobody can do what you do. Nobody can do what Wendy Williams does, whether you like her or not. That's her thing. When I go home to be the Lord another hundred plus years, nobody can do my, what I do. <laughs> That's real. Amen. That's nobody can do. I'm not boasting on me. I'm boasting on God. He called me. He chose me. He found me. He put his word in my mouth. Yeah. I boast in him. That's so good, Pastor. Amen. Cause let me tell you, let, let me. Can I keep it real? If I, if it was up to me, I probably would just go somewhere and be a good church member and sit down. I understand. Thank you. You do understand. Come back today. Come tell me what you like. Just <laughs> afterwards. No, for real. 
You have to love people. You go through a lot in ministry. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. But it's worth it. I, I mean, you know, I'm, 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 I'm built for this. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Through the good times, the bad times, the up times, the down times, people like you, people don't like you, people talk about you. And, and, and things you go through even with Christians. I ain't talking about the world. To be honest, I never really had a big fight with the world, if, you, if I be honest. They can care less. The world, the, what the world does, if the world don't like you, they just ain't going to fool with you. Let me say that again. If the world don't like you, the world just aren't going to fool with you. But Christians not going to do that. Christians are going to talk about you. Put their mouth on you. Yep. Put other people's mouth on you about them. That's real. That's real. It's talking right. Oh, I know I'm talking right. I ain't looking to be 57 to not be able to talk right. Amen. Your fight is in the church. Your fight is amongst other believers. But if you stay strong to God, God will cause you to rise above it. We're called to rise above. Amen. Glory to God. Lord. And my heart tonight is to really encourage you. Because I can feel your pain. I can feel your disappointment. I can feel your question marks. I can feel your voids. Not because I'm so great and mighty, just because God's hands upon my life. And I know that you want to see more. I know that you want to go further. I know even the things you may be facing that are hard in your life, you just want it done. Amen. Yes. Amen. And we as a people, we're very impatient. Yes. There are things I would have liked to have done six months ago. <laughs> uh, okay, God, it's a sudden move, and I got to just keep trusting you and looking at you. And I'm tired. You ain't talking, Lord. Commercial breaks, Angie. <laughs> That's all right, Angie. All right. Lord, let me see who it is. I don't know that. No, it's coming from. Anyway, so I, I get it. See, I get it. And I want you to know that I feel you. I understand. We have not a high priest, Pastor Ben, that's not touched by the feeling of our infirmities. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Give God a hand of praise. Number three, do all that the Lord leads you or tells you to do or instructs you to do. And I want to stretch you from now, even into 2020 to 2022. Whatever you do for God, how can you take it up to the next level? How can you do more? I want to encourage you to come out of that comfort zone. And I'm, I'm challenging myself too. Lord, help me to do the things that are uncomfortable to my flesh but they line up with your word. Oh, I gotta say that again. Yes. Somebody needs to write that down. Yes. Lord, help me to do the things that line up with your word that are uncomfortable for my flesh. Amen. Now, if I was just a preacher or a teacher that just preaches good sermons and messages, I would try to stretch you. We say, oh, that was so good. No, I strive to live what I teach and preach about. I ain't perfect. I said, first of all, I'm not perfect. But I strive. Say strive. strive. There are some people that don't, that don't even try to do better. They don't even try to change. Well, that they set me the way I am. This is just how I am. The devil is a liar. I, I just can't change. You can, you can change. Oh, you're going to change. I want you to be able to be, to be, to stretch. I want to stretch you. Come out of that comfort zone. Stop doing just enough. I've been in school too. Just enough. To do, you just want to do just, y'all want to do, y'all want to try to strive for the A. You just, just enough to pass. Amen. Amen. I know I ain't by myself. <laughs> Let's do more. Let's go deeper. Deep calls out to deep. But in order for us to get that greater anointing, in order for us to be greater use of God, it's going to cost us to do something. Sacrifice. And our flesh doesn't like sacrifice. Amen. Angie, you can go. You got praise worship in the morning. Go ahead. Give Angie a hand of praise. We love you, Angie. We'll see you next month. Amen. 
That's right, give Angie some love. I want to really, really drill that in you. I, I want you to, to really stretch yourself. Say stretch. Yes. And you don't have to tell me to take, if I'm saying something, take it before the Lord. If you feel like, uh -huh, I'm, com I'm comfortable. If you ask the Holy Spirit, am I too comfortable? You're going to have to dream with the word yes all night. <laughs> or very, very, very. Amen. All of us. I'm almost done. I'm just going over the points again. Number three, do all the Lord tells you or leads you to do or instructs you to do, even when it's not easy. Yes, Lord. God will instruct you to do some things that's not going to be easy. That's not going to be comfortable. He may call it, he may lead you to call some people and you, you just grit your teeth as you dial them. <laughs> I'm keeping it real. He may tell you to bless some people and you're like, bless. <laughs> this much more. <laughs> this ain't 25 hours in a car. <laughs> Tell me that I just want to do what I, 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 I want to do whatever God leads me to do. Amen. In order for us to do what God, we got to come out of that place of comfort. Talking right. Tidings of comfort and joy. <laughs> comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort. No, that's what we want. Comfort and joy. <laughs> Some people still may be drinking southern comfort. Y'all might say, just keep, keep your head down. Just keep your head down. Just keep, just, just, I, just, I don't know who that's why I don't even want to look up. Mm -hmm. I never had Southern Comfort, I can tell you that. All right, number four. You never had that? Number four. She said, me either. After you're born, then the fight begins. Don't be surprised. We're not, what's the scripture say? We're not surprised by the things that come against us. The things the enemy brings. We're not ignorant of his devices. Yep. Consider, consider it not strange concerning these fiery trials. Uh, You're like, Lord, I just came out of one. Here's another one. After you're born, then the fight begins. After you're born again, or after you accept your call, the fight begins. But we don't fight for ourselves. We fight with the Lord. I know y'all ready to go. I can feel y'all. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Number six, you can and will do it. You will do it. You're going to do what God wants you to do. You're going to fulfill your purpose. You're going to fulfill your destiny. You will do it. You will do it. God will answer your prayers. I prophesy that you all, you will get good news. You will get answered prayer. Amen. The things you have before the Lord, He will come through for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But you have to know it's only a test. Say it's only a test. It's only a test. It's only a test. It's only a test. If God spoke it, He's well able and He will bring it to pass. But you got to remember, not in your time. It's in the timing of God. Galatians 6 9 says, Be not weary or discouraged in well doing. I need to hear it myself. I need to. I need to sit down and listen to it again. Galatians 6 9 says, Be not weary in well doing, for in due season. And one thing I learned your due season and God's due season is two different due seasons. I just want to give you that revelation. Let me say that again for them in the back. Your due season and God's due season is two different seasons. Amen. And you know what I want us to do? This just came to me. I want us while we're waiting, and I, I want to be there too. I want us while we're waiting to wait with a good attitude. Yes. I don't want to see you waiting and cussing. Y'all not saying nothing spiritual. <laughs> Let me say that again for the minute back to hear me say. I don't want you while you're waiting. I don't want you to be waiting and cussing. I don't want you waiting and arguing. Amen. Y'all got quiet. I don't want you waiting and drinking. I want you waiting with a good attitude. 
God will bless you if you wait with a good answer. So sometimes it's best for you in a hard, 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 hard trial. Just keep your mouth closed. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say, Lord, help me to wait with a good attitude. You know what else we gotta wait? We gotta wait with. We have to. We have to wait. This is good. We have to wait, but stop murmuring and complaining. Tired of him. I look at him. I just look at him. He just, I get so tired of looking at him. I get tired of looking at him. I get tired of looking at him. I'm tired of tired of tired. I'm tired of these bills. Tired of these church folks. I'm just tired. Tired of this job. You just got the spirit of tired of us. Tired of Pastor Mark telling me to clean up one more thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> we get tired. But whatever you're waiting for, wait with a good attitude. Amen. And the good thing is, if you're not there, just say, Lord, I'm sure everybody pray, Lord, help me to grow into that. Yeah. Amen. Right, Kevin? Amen. Lord, help me to grow into that. God has an awesome purpose for your life, Kevin. I'm not just saying it because you're here tonight. But he has an awesome purpose in your life. And what the enemy wants to do, he wants to discourage you and bring you so down that you can't see the bigger picture of what God has in store for you. But God has called you and chose you in your mother's womb, and the strong hand of the Lord is upon you. So the Lord says, stay in my face and stay before me. Don't look to the left or to the right. I will lead you and guide you in that self-saving hour. What you're to do and what you're not to do. He says you're marked for the kingdom of God. There's purpose and destiny in you. Don't be moved by any other voice but the voice of the Holy Spirit. For my sheep know my voice and the voice of the stranger they won't follow. Follow the voice of the Holy Spirit and you will not miss it in this next season of your life, said the Lord. Give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Give God a I feel a praise here. Give God a praise. In the midst of your fight, the Lord will always shield you from the enemy. Why will he shield you? Because you got work to do. You got things to do. You got things to do. We cry. We hurt, we get disappointed, we go through in our body. Yeah. <laughs> I love William. William said, Pastor Mark, <laughs> he has such a nice voice. Pastor Mark, did you eat today? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I said, I, I said I'm pressing it for service. Man. I didn't boast it on me. I'm just, it just came to me. He said, oh. he said well, I never see you eat. <laughs> I said, well, I'm trying to press it for Saturday night for somebody to get a breakthrough and an answer prayer. Amen. 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 But I, I said it because you know the young people watch you. You don't even know they watch you. They watch you. Amen. <laughs> but I love you all so much. And I, I believe in this word tonight so much. Not that it's nothing new. Y'all read the story of Jesus Christ, the birth of Christ, many, many times. But my heart goes so much out to you all. Because some things I know you're going through, some things I don't know. But I know what I feel when I walk through these doors. I know that, you know, God keeps me in a place to pray, keep you all in prayer. And I love you. Y'all are my family. It's not, this is not just a ministry. We're family. I love you all. Y'all are my family. Amen. 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 Every race, every creed, every nation, Mike Amen. and Marie, Carol, all my, all my family. Amen. Because God put us together. Yes. Lord. That we can do the work of the kingdom together. Amen. Amen. Break it down. Amen. 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 And I want to, we, we're going to make it. Yes. Amen. God has Amen. great things in store. And no devil in hell or person will stop or block the God wants to do. Last point I'm through, you're unstoppable. You have to know that you're unstoppable because what you carry, you carry power, you carry anointing, you carry the greater one on the inside of you. I'm saying I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. I, I just feel I just feel like things are shaking right now. Things are shaking tonight. And I feel like God is bringing things. And to, can I have my prayer music minister will real softly? God bless you all tonight. We thank you for tuning in. We love you. We ask that you tune in tomorrow morning at 7.55 and know that no one else can fit your shoes. They can fit your shoes, but they can't fill your shoes. I love you and have a good night. Amen. Yeah.